That is me, because, like, Irvine usually has pretty good internet. No, it has nothing to do with our internet. Um, it has everything to do with, like, the amount of internet that's going through our, our router. Our router can't handle, like, all of this information, because we have, like, four good computers on that are all on Dropbox, Box, they're on used, you know, everything yeah. is on. <laughs> and so what we usually do to fix this is turn a lot of shit off. For example, I just turned off my Dropbox and all that stuff. So it should be fine. Oh, I'm actually surprised it went as long as it did. With because like I think there's this one extra thing turned on and it's like oh, abort, abort. Yeah, if we're it's doing if we're, if we're both doing classes at the same time, then I know that that like. Yeah, but we we have a fail. Turn a lot of shit off. For example, I just turned off my Dropbox and all that stuff. Um, it's pretty so, ironic how um, we it should be fine. Oh, I'm actually surprised it went as long as it How seamless technology is with, these yeah, days. Right. I think there's just one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing just like, works, and uh, you don't abort. have to talk about it. Abort. Yeah, I'm gonna update my. Yeah, yeah we're doing. Pretty uh, ironic. We're both doing classes at the same <laughs> <Yeah>. time. <laughs> Told you, ten years, guys. Y'all didn't want to yeah, listen. Yeah, but we we have a fail. <laughs> turn a lot of shit. You want to listen? You're just wrong. Ten years. You're just wrong. All right, we'll we'll just answer a few more. For example, I just turned off my Dropbox and all that stuff. Um, so pretty really ironic like how we're moving. It should be fine. Oh, I'm actually surprised when it's on. This technology is these days. Yeah, right. 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 Yeah, like I like I, I think when we were at Crazy Pixel, did we ever read cover letters? Like I didn't give a shit. Like I just looked. Yeah, the, wait, you have to be able to read. <laughs> yeah, right. That's yeah, what well, I see. Yeah. Pictures, man. Because like, I actually, I don't. I personally don't like cover letters because I feel like every cover letter is the same. It's always that yeah, same like yeah. jargon where it's like, "Hi, I'm AJ. I'm a hardworking, team-oriented like artist." It's like no shit. Like if you weren't, <laughs> why would you apply? Like, well, people, usually, boy, I hate Mondays. <laughs> yeah, like I'm an asshole, and I only work for myself. <laughs> yeah, usually the in-person interview usually settles those types of problems or questions, exactly. right? Like when they actually meet you, and you're like you're breathing out of your mouth, you didn't like wash your clothes. Isn't that what you, the like, phone screen come is in? For? Like the first thing you say to them is like, is like, like Balls. you guys have sandpaper in the toilet rooms. <laughs> Yeah, sandpaper in the toilet rooms. <laughs> like, Can you please evacuate from the building? I don't think you're the right person for us. No How matter how good your it? artwork What's is, if you say something like that. Can you imagine the HR people that make those free, like those phone screens? Like the different conversations they have with some of these artists, man. Oh, yeah. oh my god, we should rec- we should have somebody record some of those sessions and just publish them, man. That'd be so awesome to hear. Yeah, well, I I, I talked to a recruiter <laughs> once, and she uh, or not a recruiter, one of my buddies who told me about a recruiter's experience. Well, they hired this girl. She was really, really good, but she would like always just stare at people. Like she, uh, you know how there's like space between your monitor, like or, or like your little <laughs> monitors. Like she'll just look at people through that, and people would see her. And you know how normally when you like catch someone looking at you, like they look away like immediately. Like, He's like, and no. it's usually like harmless. Right, I was like, oh, okay, whatever, like, awkward moment. But, like, she would just, like, keep eye contact, right? And they would, like, you know, they would test it. Like, they would, like, move around, like, is she looking at me or is she, like, daydreaming? And she's like, no, I'm staring at you. And uh, they got weirded out. It was, like, not, like, so maybe it was just that one person, right? No, like, a lot of people were like, no, like, even at lunch. David Case said, some places require it. Yeah, well, a lot like of said, a lot of places do require. Yeah, it, right? yeah but it's really HR that requires it, right? It, HR requires. It's one of those things where, like, the way it usually works is like, if you
like you know how it is like they have like, the system of all their workers so that way if people like leave or whatever they have like a list of people so then they have to have like your resume and your cover letter yeah, so it's, yeah. it's those things where like it's i don't know like it's kind of dumb because i feel like every cover letter is the same for me i always just like grab like a cover letter like skeleton where it's like it's almost like ad libs you kind of fill your name in and then you kind of just change the studio like <laughs> yeah, right you and change you, the first paragraph and, like, the second two paragraphs. Yeah, it's just like, hi, I'm Kalen, I'm hardworking, I'm cool, I'm a good artist, like, here's my portfolio. Hi, and, and by the way, I love your games. But who was the yeah, first? Right. Who was the first person to write that? He's he's on, sitting on a gold bar, dude. He's selling this template. <laughs> As a pet like, rock. Right? Template, dude. No, Five dollars. I just don't think there's anyone that goes like, man, we have AJ and we have Yeah, uh, okay, so just, the, just because this is... This is like a clearly like a, a, a very specific occasion. Uh, I think for you, Dave, it, it's just as simple as just like really do your research on the company and just sound professional. Like that's probably the best advice we can give you. Like just say yeah. like what you've done and how you, you admire uh, the company or it, whether it's true or not. I think it'd be better if it was true, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean like for me, I wrote in co a couple cover letters and that's usually what it's been like, you know, to whom it may concerns. And, I am a man, have leadership and power. I can draw <laughs> faster than most of the <laughs> I'll perform it. You know, that's interesting, your guys' experience writing cover letters. Is that I've never written a single one ever, and I, I only used a resume uh, once. One uh, time. It's, it's pretty big for companies that like have a lot of people applying. And I think it's more so like wait, they wait, just want to make sure that you're passionate <laughs> about their shit. He's saying that you don't work for big companies. He's saying, <laughs> no, he's saying the the turtles, well, like, I, I get why it's needed, but then again, I think it, it just kind of like, it just, it's a saturated, it's the same saying, thing every time. He's saying you're working on turtles ain't no big deal. He's saying you're working on turtles ain't well, no like, big deal. But like, I don't know if there's ever been a situation where they're like, all right, we're going to hire a Kalen or AJ, they're dead even. Well, I don't know, man. AJ wrote a really compelling. That never cover. happens, though, either. <laughs> don't ever, yeah. That, that, like, <laughs> Dave, just write one and good luck. And don't it look, should just be like, like who's uh, cheaper at that yeah, point. Yeah, no, that I cover letter just made me cry you, tears. Write it this way. Like, him. You've done it the right way. Like, I don't know, man. Like, Do you like, think it's worth um, writing a funny cover letter? Just to. I don't know. I'm not going to say anything because I haven't done it myself. probably risky. Yeah, it is risky. But HR doesn't have much of a sense of humor, you know? Yeah, yeah so, it depends yeah. like who you're writing it to. Like you have to really know that person because if they read something the wrong way, again, it could be like a racist joke. <laughs> Blacklisted. Like, yeah, I believe that people should hate black people because yeah. that's their race. It was funny. I had an <laughs> so don't write that. I had an exit the interview end. at DreamWorks, <laughs> and HR really isn't funny. And my exit interview at DreamWorks, they were like, "Okay, so after being here for so long, and uh, now that you're leaving, do you have any advice on how we could?" improve our efficiency oh, it's gonna be good and i was like i was like oh well <laughs> i don't know my assistant's not in here to take notes on uh, <laughs> what you just asked <laughs> and she was like what do you mean by that and i was like never get mind the fuck out. <laughs> get, get the fuck out <laughs> they probably they probably oh, wrote well. off they probably took a they probably put out a little note after you left like don't hire this this smart ass <laughs> It's funny. I had a um, I had an interview at DreamWorks for like a, a render wrangler, and uh, I was pretty much a shoe in, right? And I, I went through you know most of the interviews and everything, and um, there was uh, at like the very end, the HR person like kind of comes back in. And they're like, you know, what? all right, well, I just have to ask you a couple more questions. You know, like, you know, where do you where do you see yourself in five years? And, you know, the the standard question. And at that point, I was just like, you know what? I, I have to say something. I'm just I'm a humorous guy, so don't say doing your wife. Don't say doing your <laughs> no, wife. No, I said, I said, <laughs> don't say I said, another I'm going to be <laughs> celebrating the fifth year anniversary of you asking me this question. Oh man! And like, That's she kind of laughed, but was like, what? Well, uh, you know what I always say? I always the, say older. The H I got older. <laughs> they go, where do you see yourself in like five years? You go like, uh, like older. Like maybe like six, seven years older, but you give them like the wrong number. <laughs> like in five years, you're like, wait, how are you gonna be seven years older? You just gotta be like, like older, maybe like eight, ten. <laughs> Let's just say it like nonchalantly, and then it's probably forty-five. Forty-five years older. older so I would have invented a time machine in which I would have traveled back in time. Just, just say it with like the utmost confidence, and just look at their face. They're gonna be like, yeah, remove the gold foil from your cover letter. You're fine. Just write a good, my... just write a decent one. Just go online, see what other people have written. And... Yeah, like honestly, all you gotta do is go get like a, just type in like cover letter, like like structure, 
yeah. and then just copy it. Like the same thing I did for my resume. It's the same thing. Like, what do you see yourself in five years in a bunker? <laughs> what? <laughs> you Whoa, should be able to, brother. Using your body I'm as a human shield. Use your body as a human shield. Global like warming. Global <laughs> warming. Global warming. Why am I thinking of taking this job? I'm saving up for my bunker. <laughs> Anyways, we'll take uh, we'll take a couple more questions, two questions, and then we'll end the stream. Unless there is no more. Oh, good. What is your greatest weakness? <laughs> is my, is my strength. You know, cover letter, right? Jesus Christ. Uh, Seriously. My, my greatest weakness like, is my strength. What do you mean, like in life or just like, I, I'm, I'm going to give one for life and one for painting. And we'll, we'll all go down. We'll all say our weaknesses, yeah? Okay, yeah. so one of my like uh, greatest weaknesses in painting uh, would have to be like environments. Like I just don't do them. I don't do them good, man. Every time I try... Like, fucking GG. Uh, but, you know, I like to think, well, the things that you're not good at and things that you're weak at have a lot to do, reflect with the time invested in it. And because of that, like, I don't really feel that I'm entirely bad at anything, you know? Not to be hubris or like arrogant, I'm just saying, if I wanted to be good at environments, there's a solution. Draw and paint and practice environments a lot, you know? I put in almost eight years into drawing characters and painting, I don't think I would imagine I have to put the same amount of time, but definitely if I put a good two years of just hardcore, that's all I did, I, I have no doubts that I would be a pretty decent environment painter, right? Um, and another one, another weakness would like on a on a personal level is that I, I and I've been working on this man in the last few months, like last several months, I've been really working on this of just having super hot ambitious <clears throat> dreams, and it's like jumping in full throttle, right? And, and not having any really escape plan. And I've been really kind of toning down on that. Um, I learned this really hard lesson like way back when, like almost like a year, two years ago, and I've been still working on it even to this day. Um, but you know, time will tell. Time will fix everything, right? And so again, it's like things like even on a social level, you should consider, you know, like things that you feel like, well, I, I, I'm, I don't have the patience to finish a painting. You know, sometimes that's sometimes some something that someone says to me. Like as like I this is a thing that I can never change. How do I work around it? Right? I'm like, or learn how to be more patient so you can finish paintings. You know? You you told me your problem and I think the answer is within the problem, right? And sometimes people avoid that. And like for me I I, I try to be very clear about what's like holding me back in my uh, in my, my artwork and in my life, you know, and I have a lot of faults. Everyone does. There's, there's no one is free of their mistakes and their um, their flaws. Uh, I think it's it's a sad story if you don't pay attention to them or you don't try to actively try to find ways to solve them, you know. And knowing that everything comes with time, everything comes with time. And if you're if you can at least work on your patience, patience is a big deal, man. Because if you have that, you can get through a lot of stuff, man. Uh, does anyone else want to answer that question? We'll make this like the last question and we'll bounce out. <clears throat> <I'm> afraid? <laughs> what? I, I got one. Uh, hey, go one for of it. The, yeah, one of the things that, like in especially in 3D art, like you really gotta tone, uh, like tune into the technical side of things and tune into like your artistic and aesthetic parts. And I think like the toughest thing for me right now doing. Um, like working on Celestial Key, uh, Cleave has been like just kind of being able to do technical and like artistic art at the same time. You know, like, well, do polygons go over here or, you know, like UV sets, you know, do I do one, two, or three? You know, what are the texture resolutions going to be versus like, oh, does this shit look good? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that's, that's pretty much the toughest thing for me right now is just switching between like technical thinking art and like artistic nice looking art you know yeah well it's good that you recognize that because it is there there are two different hats like they're two yeah. different jobs like that's what i do i i work on making things look pretty and then you come to me and say that looks pretty <laughs> but i can't yeah. make that that or that <laughs> yeah oh, okay and then i make the change but a pretty change that yeah. solves that problem and uh and then it goes back and forth it's same with animation and rigging and stuff right yeah. like it's it's a collaborative effort to to make one piece of artwork yeah, and um, and when you're on your own, like that's what we've developed. Like that's what we've discovered as well with our own game aesthetic. It's like 
Like we have to, or art, for example, "Don't Wake the Babies." Art is that of legends. <laughs> it is just oh trash, <laughs> and uh, it's because, like, you know, I don't want to worry about that right now. I want to worry about a game. Like, can I make a game? Right. Right. Yeah. And I think the game is goofy enough that it could be forgiven for its lack of ability. Of, yeah. Like, I mean, some of my favorite games look really shitty, like uh, Nidhogg. Man, that game <laughs> looks horrible. Any awards? <laughs> Not to shit on their art or anything entirely, but uh, it's no, uh, you know, it's no fucking Call of Duty, right? It's no Battlefield or a fucking other I solid. I prefer Nidhogg's art style, and it's actually got um, an uh, an art style there, whereas yeah. Call of Duty's is just standard, bland, shooter, realistic-looking things. You know, yeah, that's, yeah. it's actually hard to do. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say to defend those artists, the hundreds of artists who <laughs> created that generic plan artwork, is that it's it's yeah. not that it's bland, it's just um, it is very clear. And I think that's why they're so yeah. popular. Because everybody knows, like, military, that, like a military soldier, especially if you look at the um, if you look at the new one they just did, uh, Advanced Warfare, that, mm. that one's not bland at all. They have a lot of, like, new oh, right. designs. But I hear, I hear what you're saying. It's like the challenge of creating uh, an artistic style might have not been very difficult, but mm. it didn't make it any easier to make the actual assets, right? I think it's, that's also partly due to the the size of the team as well, because yeah, you can't sure. have um, a very unique art style across hundreds of people who all have to work on yeah. um, in, a certain, in the same direction. So if you go with something that everyone knows how to do, then... Yeah, I, th I think too. Like the realism, realistic games market too is going to become easier and easier to develop those types of assets. It's just going to be like walk into a camera, like room of cameras, take a picture, and now you have your three D asset, right? Uh, where like stuff like that's why I'm trying to wow. bank off of artistic style because that is really the only place that you can tremendously vary your stuff from on a technical level as well as a artistic level, right? Like games like Journey. Cannot be replicated mm. by someone taking the picture of like someone dressed right. up. What is that mm. like o Oni Forest or whatever? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that one's same thing. Cool. Like, or this one game that just we we play. What is it called again? With this two D one with the the sadness. <laughs> oh, the, oh, sadness. the sadness. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It looks great. Minecraft is another great example, right? But but you know, um, you know, it's. To, to look at games like Call of Duty and uh, like it, it, same thing with the film industry, like to kind of like to to not to say Dean you're like disrespectful or anything, but to come in there and like you know easily it's like, it's just too easy to say how shittily generic that stuff is, right? To forget that there are lots of people working on it, right? It's like how I feel yeah, yeah. people talk crap about like Transformers. They're like, ah, oh, visual effects is fucking the easy way out. It takes a real man to tell well, real I stories. Thomas was freaking awesome. Yeah, but but you get what I'm saying. Like people talk shit about that stuff because it's easy to say it was a computer that did that. But the reality is, no. Uh, Those people know. obviously don't know how hard it is to make a computer do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, some people <laughs> are really like, be like visual effects. Don't just want to do that. I mean, there was like a radio guy when I was driving down on the, on the freeway one morning, and he was talking about like Guards of the Galaxy, and he was like, "The VFX are terrible. Like they're so bad. Like I could do better on my computer. I feel like what? Right. And I'm just like, <laughs> I was like, I was cracking up because I was like, the ego behind that statement as like a radio <laughs> DJ that literally really doesn't have any like any like actual skill, but besides like just talking, I guess, in front of a mic. And I was just like, the ego behind that. Like I was actually hoping that like. NPC would just contact him and be like, "All right, here's a scene." All right, <laughs> uh, Wait, we heard we heard you could do this with yeah, one computer. I, like, I wish, I wish, I wish, they, I wish people would just call him out. Like, I wish, like, like ILM would just be like, or NPC would just be like, "Oh yeah, we're working on like the new like you know Avengers Five. Like, here's a couple shots. You know, a couple like maybe five seconds. Let's see what you can do. Here's here's Maya. Here's Nuke." Like, all right, we'll we'll Pretty see you in five months. The cinema, and you we see um, a two second shot in the middle of a film with just two stick figures walking around, <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> as, no, and then put his name in the credits, <laughs> too, as, as visual effects god. You're right. <laughs> but what if he killed it though? What if he was like amazing? No, <laughs> he, he actually was so mad. <laughs> he just hand painted every frame. <laughs> He's just like, I told you, I could do better. Yeah. Like I just learned no, this. Like you learned I, it sarcastically. Really, like when I hear people say shit like that, I I'm really I'm waiting for the day 
where I just show up at work and turn on my computer, and my computer has just all, all by itself accidentally created Transformers 5. And then <laughs> and that day happens, we're like, oh, man, yeah, the visual effects are so, like, lame. That's the easy way out. Oh, totally. It's, the computer does everything. Yeah, you're right, because my computer just accidentally made Transformers 5. Here it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's. I I wish it. I wish it were that easy. Yeah, I, wish I don't even have to. Someone says to show up and like get this stuff done. I'd be like, oh, let me press this button. All right, let's go to the gym. <laughs> I'll, sh- I'll show up later. <laughs> I will say though, dude, the fir- my first day in visual effects, like I just had to. I just had to transfer all these uh, video files. It was like from ProRes to like QuickTime or something like that. I just had to, you know, recapture all this video. And the guy I was working with is Christian, AJ is. Uh, oh, yeah, Christian. Christian. And he was, like, he was like, yeah, now, so you set this, and you set this, and um, now we go upstairs and we have coffee. <laughs> and I was, like, <laughs> I was like, really? And you do that every 20 minutes? And he's like, yeah, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then it got more complicated. And it never got less complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. VFX is like always evolving. That's like the hard part about it. Like, there was a great article I read recently that was telling um, like it was on the same subject matter. It was basically saying uh, we should stop having people say computer graphics and yep. start saying visual effects. And uh, it's it's in the vein of understanding that people will make this happen, whether you like it or not. That's a whole different story, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you think that it's easy and that they, all they had to do was turn on the make it good switch, um, you're <laughs> heavily mistaken. You know, I've worked on set and and in the visual effects studios, and I will say there are people even on set who think that that's how it's done. They think that the computer does all the work for you, and it's a or lot like of you, you moved wrong. <laughs> well, just just caught my arm out. Just put it put a face double in. I'm gonna go into my trailer. I think that's why the indie development scene, like with games, like that's probably why we're all supportive, right? Because we all know it's fucking hard, yeah, right? Oh my like, god, damn it! Like, how, <laughs> how do I fix this? Please help me. My game does not work. You know. And what I was just saying you. before about the um, Call of Duty being. Bland. I wasn't saying that it wasn't hard to make Call of Duty. I know how hard that would be, but I'm saying that indie developers, because they've got a small team, you're able to do what express yourself as an individual more yeah. than in massive teams where you all have to focus on getting your art style um, cohesive with everyone else. Yeah, I think to defend um, like, think what you were saying good. earlier too is like. I, I get you. What you like? What I knew what you meant by was that usually the decision of making it look that way was not entirely in the favor of the artists, right? Someone else hmm. made that decision, and that's sometimes not the artist's fault, you know? Yeah. And and I've been in there situations where big I worked companies on do do a lot of creative stuff though. Like um, Blizzard is one of the big companies that have massive teams, but also have a very strong, unique art style in a lot of their games, rather than. Totally. What, what were you gonna say, Ken? You were starting to talk. What? 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 Well, I was saying. I was saying that that we all heard what you said, and they, there's no excuse for it. Yeah. I <laughs> so I, I just wanted to I just wanted to leave on a good note. But you know what, Ken? You're right. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you, Dean. I think that magic button's gonna be Transformers Seven, not Transformers Five. Yeah, I get at least four years, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, anyways, guys, no, seriously, this has been a pleasure. This has been an absolutely fun time <laughs> with everybody. Uh, we should definitely end the stream now. Um, yeah. We started a little Everyone head to my Kickstarter. Yay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll link it back into the chat. Yeah, link it back so we can tell people about it. Yeah. yeah. Much appreciated, man. Much appreciated. Yeah. yeah. We can't absolutely. make this game without it. So You guys would do the same for, for me, man. Uh, I'm going to you, brother. I want to help you guys out. Um, for anyone who's watching, uh, that just joined. De- Dean and Brendan are they launched a Kickstarter. John's gonna go ahead and link it into the the uh, Ustream chat for anyone who's watching this later on. Um, the the name of the game here. Let me see if I can get a screenshot. This is a small one. This is a big one. There you go. Uh, if you could just you could definitely just go to the Kickstarter as well. Just Google or not Google, but search for this. I'm sure you'll find it right away. Uh, one of the many ways of going about it by their name or the, the company's name. I'm sure there's a way you can find it. Um, we there's a post of it I shared on my Facebook page if you follow, or my Facebook if you follow my Facebook it's there. 
Uh, I'll probably repost it again as the time goes on. Can we share another Kickstarter? Because I just saw on my feed that Chris Hansen is using Kickstarter to, to restart to catch a predator. No. What? Oh, <laughs> yeah, head straight there. That's the so random. Well <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Wait, wait, is that show popular in... And is that, is, that, is that only an American show, or is that like... What, Predator? Yeah. Where Catch he up. goes around the forest and um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's chasing oh. him and stuff. All right, so let's, uh, <laughs> let's just end this conversation. <laughs> let's end this conversation before we... we, we, we uh, That's the only Predator problems. I know. Yeah. No, no, not Predator. Like, how to catch a Predator. About um, how, I think you just get Arnie involved, don't you? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's so funny. I love it. There's no love it. No. What's being said. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you guys for showing up. Sorry we didn't, we didn't get a chance to answer a lot of questions, but we'll do it next time. Like I said, we're going to try to do these streams very often, so that way there's always opportunity for people to do that. Uh, next, we'll be meeting up next Friday again, probably around the same time. Um, whether it's Ustream or Twitch, there will be a way to get to us. We'll, we'll figure it out. Either way, we will be uploading all these videos to YouTube, so if you just follow my YouTube, they'll be all there. Um, but yeah, guys. Thanks, Kalen. Thanks, Brendan. Thanks, Dean. Yeah. Thanks, Wrong. John, for yeah. moderating. And uh, all right, guys. Everyone have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys around. I'll be showing a, a teaser trailer of my game uh, pretty soon too. So if you guys want to check it out, it's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a it's a working it's, it's a working project. Uh, but it, I think it'll be fun to share, anyways. All right, guys. Cool. All right. Yeah. See you, see you later. So, all right. Thanks for having us. Yeah, well, John has to end the stream, though. Oh, shit. John